Today we're going to create an ERC20 token in about five lines of code. Now, anytime you're programming something, there are always tons of different tools and frameworks that you can use, and there are pros and cons to every choice that you make. Now, before diving into the smart contract code, I'm first going to give a brief overview of the different tools that I'm going to use and why I'm using them. If you want to jump right into the code, then feel free to skip ahead in the video. Right off the bat, your first question may be, why are we creating an ERC20 token? There are so many other standards out there. And that's a great question. But first, if you are not familiar with ERC20, I suggest you check out a previous video I made about ERC20. Basically, ERC20 is a, is a standard for creating fungible tokens. ERC721 is a standard for creating non-fungible tokens, such as deeds and NFTs. And ERC223 is basically an improvement on ERC20 to address the problem that with ERC20, token holders were accidentally or unknowingly sending their tokens into contracts which were not able to process the tokens, which resulted in those tokens being locked and lost in the contracts forever. Now, ERC1155 is a standard for creating both fungible and non-fungible tokens in the same contract. Now, all of these different standards have their own use cases, but generally ERC20 is the easiest for beginners, so we're going to go with that. Now, which language are we going to use for coding? Solidity is by far the most commonly used language. It's a high-level object-oriented language, very similar to Java and C++, and it's very easy for existing developers to pick up. Now, Viper was introduced to be a more secure form of creating smart contracts, and Viper does this by taking away many of the features that Solidity has. For example, in Viper, there is no inheritance, there is no recursion, there is no modifiers, and there is no operator or function overloading. Now, this very much limits what you can do with Viper, and it makes you code in a much more constrained way, but arguably it is more secure because there are fewer weaknesses in your code. And there's another language like LLL, which stands for low-level Lisp-like language, which based on the name is based on Lisp. So it's more of a functional language as opposed to a declarative language like the previous ones. So all of these languages have different purposes. None of them are really better than the others. They just have different characteristics, which might be more suitable depending on your level of coding and what kinds of smart contract you're trying to create. But basically we'll go with Solidity because it is best for beginners. And which blockchain are you going to use? The Ethereum blockchain is the most well-known and it's very secure because it has a lot of hashing power behind it. However, gas fees are high and transactions can take a while. So other blockchains, for example, the Binance Smart Chain and Solana were created to, to address these problems because they have much lower gas fees and transactions can be processed much faster. We also have permission blockchains like Corda, which are useful for banking applications because in Corda, being a permission blockchain, every node on the network has an identity, which means the chances of having attackers or untrustworthy people on your network is much lower. So there's a much lower chance of fraud. So all of these blockchains have different use cases, just like the different coding languages we discussed earlier. And none of them is really better than the other. They just, they just have different purposes. So for our purpose, we are going to be using Ethereum just because it's very easy and simple to use. When testing and deploying on the Ethereum blockchain, there are many different networks you can use. For example, the mainnet is the real network, which uses real Ethereum. And I'm not going to be using that one because that will be very expensive due to the gas fees. Instead, I'll be using one of the test networks, RinkB. You could also use another test network, such as Robston or Coven. To set up, you should first have MetaMask ready, and you should also get some test ether from a faucet. I won't be showing how to do this in this video, but there are many other videos out there on YouTube. And when we're coding, I'm going to be using the online Remix IDE because it's very convenient and easy for viewers to learn from. And for our implementation of ERC20, I'm going to be using the Open Zeppelin implementation. After we write our code, the next thing we're going to do is compile our code into EVM bytecode, and then we're going to employ the bytecode onto the Ethereum virtual machine. Okay, now we're finally going to look at the code. And as I mentioned, it's about five lines long. The first thing we're going to do is import the Open Zeppelin implementation of the ERC20 interface. So that's what this first line is doing. And later on in Remix, we'll be able to look in this ERC20.so file to see the Open Zeppelin implementation. 
So the next thing I'm going to do is create a contract, which I'll call Bob, which is going to inherit from the Open Zeppelin implementation. So basically saying that the smart contract, the smart contract Bob, is an ERC20 smart contract. And in our constructor, we're going to pass in an initial supply, which will represent how many tokens we have in this contract. And we're also going to pass in the name of the token, Bob, and the symbol of the token, which I'll call BB. This call to Mint is going to take the initial supply, which is some number, and it's going to increment the balance of message.sender by this initial supply. So because I'm the one calling the contract, then message.sender is going to represent my address. So basically it's going to increase my balance with all the coins that are in the contract as given by this initial supply variable. And what are we going to pass in for the initial supply? Well, since our contract is going to use 18 decimal places, let's say that I wanted to create 100 tokens. So if each token is divisible to 18 decimal places, that means in total we're going to have 100 times 10 to the 18, which means that our initial supply that I'm going to pass in is going to be 10 to the 20th. So it's going to be 1 followed by 20 zeros. First, I'm going to create a new file to store this smart new smart contract. So I'm going to create a new file. Let me call this uh, bobcontract.soul. And now I'm going to paste in the contract code that we looked at before. This code will be available on my GitHub, so you don't have to type it out yourself. So I'm going to paste it in. There you see we have we are importing Open Zeppelin. Then we have our constructor where we're going to create the Bob token with the symbol as BB. So if I go over to the compiler, I can compile this code. And the compilation was successful. And now if you go back to the file explorer, you can see now that in the, the dependencies folder, we have imported the Open Zeppelin implementation. So you can see here this code is referencing Open Zeppelin .contracts, token ERC20, ERC20.soul. And that same path, if we follow that same path, we can see that ERC20.soul is there. So looking at ERC20.soul, you can see it's about 400 lines long, and it's basically implementing all of the features of the ERC20 interface for us. So for example, here they have a mapping, which will keep track of the address of each person and their balance. Here we have variables representing the total supply of the token, the name of the token, and the symbol. And we have the constructor. So now, if we look back at our earlier code, we were passing in Bob as the name and symbol as the symbol of the token. So let's quickly go back to bobcontract.so. Here we have our constructor. We have Bob and BB. And that corresponds, Bob corresponds to the name, and then BB corresponds to the symbol. So I definitely recommend that you do go through the Open Zeppelin implementation to see how they're doing it. But for our purposes, we can just piggyback on their awesome work and just import it and pass in these two variables that we need. So next, I'm going to deploy to the testnet. So I'm going to go to Injected Web 3, and I'm going to have to authorize MetaMask to deploy my smart contract. So I'm going to go next, so you can see that this is now using my test account, which currently has 0.17 Ether in it. If I go to MetaMask here, you can see this is my MetaMask rank B, 0.1697 Ether. And in Remix, I see the same thing, my test account, 0.169 Ether. And next, I'm going to click on the contract that I want to deploy. So I want to deploy bobcontract.sol and I'm going to click Deploy. And here you can see there was an error encoding 
the arguments invalid big number string ah right so here you can see that i forgot to initialize the initial supply so if you remember from earlier i'm going to create 100 tokens and each token is divisible to 18 decimal places which means i need a one followed by 20 zeros so here i'm going to paste in the one followed by 20 zeros and now i'm going to click deploy and now the creation of bob is pending and I will confirm. Now we can see that the contract is being created. So if we click view on Etherscan, then we can see that the transaction is still pending, but that is the contract from my MetaMask. Sorry, that was the address from my MetaMask. And finally, we see that it succeeded. And there's been one block confirmation. And now, this is the address of the contract. So by clicking on that link, this is my contract, I can see that it is called Bob and the symbol is BB. So if I want to now import this token into my MetaMask, then I will copy the contract address and then go to MetaMask and I'm going to import my token. So now I can pass in my contract address and then you can see it automatically populated with this the sim the symbol bb i'm going to import the custom token and there you can see that the balance is 100 tokens so once i import it it's done now i have 100 bb tokens in my metamask if we go back to remix then we can also interact with our deployed contract using the ui so here is my Bob smart contract, and then because it's an ERC20 interface, then we can interact with it using the functions as defined in the ERC20 interface. So for example, we have approve, transfer, transfer from, allowance, and okay, so let's figure out the name of our contract. Uh, it's called Bob, okay, and the symbol is BB. And our total supply is going to be 1 followed by 20 zeros, exactly as I had created it earlier. And if I want to check the balance of my account, then I can get the address of my account here. And I can put it in here in balance of. And then I can see that my balance is 1 followed by 20 zeros. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, or feedback, please feel free to comment on the video.